Hello everyone, my name is Marina Baretti. I'm a medical oncologist at Johns Hopkins, where together with Dr. Mark Yarshan, we're really building a program to try to understand better fibrolamellar cancer, and more importantly, to, fi uh, to find better treatment for our patients. And in the past, we have discussed with you our very exciting novel trial, in which we are really trying to exploit a critical vulnerability metabolic vulnerability of fibrolamellar cancer by combining a glutamine antagonist plus immune checkpoint uh, inhibitors. And the reason is because um, extensive work done in our laboratory, but also from uh, other people that are, again, extremely focused in fibrolamellar research, have repeatedly and constantly shown that fibrolamellar cancer seems to be characterized by a very different metabolic program. It really seems to use this amino acid called glutamine as the main source to support cell proliferation, cell growth, and to support energy production. And as a result of this glutamine-dependent metabolism, the FLC tumors create a very harsh, almost toxic immune microenvironment for the good T cells. And this is the reason why this T cell uh, seems to be not very functional and seems and not able to really kill the cancer cells. So in our work, we have shown that if we are able to um, antagonize this glutamine metabolism through a glutamine antagonist, we can reverse this T cell dysfunctionality and we can enhance the activity of immune checkpoint inhibitor resulting in a much better anti-tumor, so cancer cell um, death. And so we have started this very exciting trial in which we are combining a glutamine antagonist called DRP-104 plus an anti-PD-1, which is a checkpoint inhibitor called durvalumab. Um, the DRP-104 is a pro-drug, so it's a better version of another drug called DON that I know Many of you are familiar. Um, uh, the problem of DON is that it's pretty toxic because it's activated everywhere in your body. DRP-104 is only activated within the tumor. So we have still the effect that we want in terms of inhibition of glutamine and, uh, metabolism, but it's much less toxic. The One of the caveats, however, is that to have the effective dose in your body, uh, DRP-104 is administrated in a subcutaneous injection, and to maintain the level in the body, the injection needs to be done twice a week, approximately three days apart. Um, and then to this subcutaneous injection, we have Durvalumab, which is once uh, a month uh, IV infusion. So we are very excited about the trial. However, we do understand that having the subcutaneous injection in our institution where currently the trial is only open was a limitation for many patients that might travel from far away and they might not be able to be in Baltimore twice a week you know, uh, for a long period of time. So recently we have engaged in important conversations with both FDA but also our regulatory um, agency here, Hopkins IRB, and we finally received the approval to allow patients after the first month to actually get the subcutaneous injection at home. So the way that we are working around to make sure that we are still preserving the safety and also the effectiveness of the trial, during the first month, patients will receive the administration here at Hopkins. And they will work very closely with us, physicians, nurse, research nurse, and pharmacists. And we will teach you and your caregivers and family step-by-step step how to handle the drug, how to prepare the syringes, how to do the administration, how to dispose the drug as well. And you will have the ability to do that yourself out under our surveillance here at Hopkins. If you feel like you are able or your caregivers are able to do so after the first month, then you, we can directly ship you the drug at home. And during a video visit, you can do the preparation administration under uh, our monitor, but at home 
This will allow you to be um, at home to receive your uh, anti-cancer drug. And in this way, we can limit the need to come at Hopkins or in whatever institution the trial will be activated to only once a month. We uh, want to make sure that everyone is com comfortable with the administration. So we have worked to prepare very detailed written step-by-step -step guide where you can follow the different step to handle the, the drug that are gonna be pictured. And also for those people who prefer a more interactive and visual step-by-step um, uh, -step guide, we also have a video which is um, prepared by our pharmacists and research nurse, again, showing to you all the different uh, steps that um, can ensure a safe handling, but also administration of the drug. Um, we think that in this way, we try to really meet our patients' need. I know that many patients want to have access to these novel drugs, and we are very excited about the scientific, rational, and potentiality of this treatment. But at the same time, we understand that patients and family have their own life, and they uh, might not be able to travel so frequently uh, to the, our institution. So we hope that in this way, we can still ha um, uh, have you access the drug in a safe way, but without the need to spend so much time away from your own home. And we will always have uh, and be available for any questions. And for sure, if patients or caregivers do not feel like they wanna do their self-administration, the ability to get the drug here is always also an option as well.